Hello, mate. Uh, it's the weekend, and we've uh, getting straight into it. We've had the the Osaka versus Brady final um, that we're going to discuss, and then I think the most of this episode is going to be dedicated to the big to the big one, really, and that's uh, Daniel Medvedev um, v Djokovic and our analysis of their semifinals and the form guide and where the money's going. So, you obviously won on Osaka, so very well done. Congratulations. Um, I didn't actually do an outright bet on the tournament. I was hedging in terms of playing on matches, so I'm a bit gutted about that. Um, I saw the final. The first set was very competitive. Could have gone here or there. I felt like Osaka got a little bit lucky to, to squeeze that first set, um, but... She is becoming somewhat of a uh, winning machine, really. And uh, I saw the press conference with Serena Williams where she broke down after losing against Osaka in the semi. Um, and I think because she thought probably it was a great, great opportunity to beat Margaret Court's record with Brady in the final. No disrespect to Brady, but what an opportunity for Serena. And I think... The fact that she was beaten in straight sets and maybe the realisation is setting in for Serena in terms of my prediction that she will never win another Grand Slam because a lot of analysis said after this semi-final, Annabelle Croft, etc., her best hope is Wimbledon. That's where she's been the most successful. But time is ticking and the likes of Osaka, they're, they're, they're starting to separate a little bit, aren't they? Yeah. Um, hi, everyone. Um, yeah, it's it's been an interesting tournament and we're going to talk about this match and the one tomorrow. But I just want to, you know, look at the overview, right? I said right at the very beginning of the tournament, right? Right at the very beginning. I've got my money on Osaka to mm. get to the final because I like Osaka. She's a great uh, champion. She's won you know, two Grand Slams up until that point. She did tremendously well in the US Open winning that. And then, you know, she had a little bit of a shoulder injury, but also because of the pandemic, she didn't play the French Open, etc. And I thought, you know what? She's well rested. She's a great player. She's won that uh, US Open. And when she was coming back into this Australian Open, I looked at the people and I thought, Barty, okay, I'll put... Um, a little bit of money down on Barty, thinking that she could get to the final. Yeah, what happened there? I, no, exactly. Oh, I, exploded. I, I, exactly. I totally agree with you about Serena. I said to you right at the beginning, mm. she's a great player, an all-round champion, one of the best women tennis players along with Steffi Graf that's ever played. She had played more tennis in the last year on hard court than she's done in a while. And this was a great opportunity for her. I wasn't too sure against Halep. I thought Halep might beat her. Yeah. Um, will it be a rematch of what happened at Wimbledon? Because I've liked Halep. She's been number one in the world. Mm -hmm. She's made me money. She's won Wimbledon. But I think Halep is going to come back and have a tremendous yeah. Wimbledon, right? I think she will. But when I saw, you know, Osaka in every match, for me, I was just like, my bet's safe. Because for those of you that have listened to the last few podcasts, I've had a few results throughout this tournament for instance i had money on donamit team to come back against nick kyrgios and he came back and won five sets but on a lot of the other matches i'd called it correctly but i fell to peer group pressure and i went with the other player when i always thought it was the other player and i was losing and at that moment in time i got to the semi-finals thinking i'm down and really, my money is on the people I betted on right at the beginning of the tournament to come in for me. And that was Osaka. And also I had a bet on Daniel Medvedev to get to the final each way as well. And I said all the way through this tournament, no fact will get to the final. And we're not going to come on to that just, you know, we're going to come on to that in a second. But just to make my point, when no fact got that injury, I thought, if he's going to go out, he's going to go out in his second match. He Barrage. didn't. Yeah. It was a five-setter. 
No, and four. that four setter, wasn't it? Four right. setter. Yeah. Yeah, four setter. And Johnny said to me, Do you think you'll go all the way? And I said, You know what? No fat does. When no fat has an injury and he comes through a difficult match like that four setter, he's only going to go on and get stronger and stronger and end up in the final. But the interesting point is, we said at the beginning, I said, no fact, we'll get to the final. Johnny said, Daniel Medvedev. I said, yeah, I think you're right. I said, well, we can agree on uh, no fact. We can agree on Daniel Medvedev. Guess who's in the final? No fact and Daniel Medvedev. Mm. But I also said, my money is on Osaka all the way through. My money's on Osaka. And when I saw Osaka come up against Williams, I was a little bit nervous. But then mm. I thought, this is the great Naomi Osaka. And then when she got through that semi-final, Johnny, and I saw that she was playing Brady. No disrespect to Brady, but I knew it was never going to happen. It got me a little bit worried in the second set when Brady started coming back in a couple of games. But I thought, no, Naomi, this is Naomi Osaka. She's just going to keep a call here. And she did me justice. So to all those people out there listening, I had a bit of pocket money on at 11 to 2, which were great odds. Yeah. At the beginning of the tournament, 11 to 2, I had. That's really good odds, actually. Yeah. See, you're good at, you've got a, a good ability to stick with those that you trust for winning the tournament. I sometimes deviate and go for your little bit of a more riskier options where I feel like I can make big money. But if you look at the stats and the data and, and anybody's listening to this, data is king, firstly, then trust your instincts. And always, if you're going to bet your pocket money, go with players that you trust, that you may have had a good record with. I'm not saying they're always going to come through because that's impossible. But I have done that on both on the male and the female side. There are certain players that I trust that come from me, like in the past used to be Murray. And then when I deviate from that at times, I rue it because uh, uh, the bet goes south. But that's not a guarantee. But you're absolutely right. Osaka, you know, deserved winner. Fantastic odds. Um, if I'd seen that myself earlier, I would have been tempted. But I don't know, something else in me was looking elsewhere. So I didn't get the, the women's side correct. I was a little bit worried for the Osaka in terms of your bet with Williams because Williams had beaten Osaka in, in the prior tournament in three sets, I think. And it looked like, actually, maybe it's Williams. Williams is going to pull through after all, but no, Osaka stepped up when he mattered in the Grand Slam. So very well done, Naomi Osaka. One of many, I guess. And uh, you never know, you could end up being the greatest. Um, so we'll, we'll, we should watch this space. There's Andreescu, there's Aiga, there's Haled, obviously. Right. And there's others, but it's fascinating. On the men's side. Yeah. Right. So if just a little overview, because we missed out one or two episodes here. Um, we, we were otherwise engaged, so apologies. Um, Rafael Nadal against Sissipas absolutely wow. was brilliant in the first two sets, probably the first two and a half sets. It looked like foregone conclusion a repeat of their semi-final last time round. Um, he wasn't even in the match. Then he misses two overheads in the tie break. And then Nadal wasn't the same player. Sissipas gets on a run. He's this steam train moving forwards. And the Greek, uh, well, there wasn't the crowd there, but he just absolutely changed. Nadal became a more of a shadow of a person. And then he lost in five sets. But I did say to you, I still will pick my man, Daniel Medvedev, because although he conquered Nadal, which was for Sissipas, was Mount Everest. He he put Nadal on a different pedestal to even Federer and Djokovic um, in his mindset, because he, he, he found it so hard to beat him and he put it right, right at the summit. But I, I put it to you, he hasn't got just a... Uh, a Nadal problem. He's got a Daniel Medvedev problem because his head-to-head -head is shocking and he just cannot beat this man. And this man's on a 20-match winning run. And let's see who, what goes on with Djokovic. What's your yeah, thought? Yeah, no, I, I, absolutely. Look, right, um, I couldn't believe it. I really couldn't believe it. 
Daniel Medvedev, um, oh, sorry, let, let's start off with Nadal. When you see a player like Nadal, Novak, Daniel Medvedev, whoever, whoever it is, being, you know, uh, in the third set in a tie break, and there was some fantastic tennis from Nadal and also naturally from Tissipas. But let's be honest, it's a tie break. It's a third set. And somehow I thought Nadal will come back. He started mm -hmm. getting some crucial points. And I thought, well, this is Nadal in a tie break in a third set. And he knows this is it. Game, set, match. For Tissipas to knock him in that third set, Ross, an amazing achievement. But then to come back in the fourth and fifth was just unbelievable. The odds on that happening was just tremendously. Well, you know how uh, many times been just... happened, Robert? How many times that it's happened that someone yeah. has beaten Nadal two sets up? I'll tell you yeah. what has happened. It's only in his whole career, in his whole career, that when he's been two sets up, he's been beaten only twice. And that was exactly. by Federer. And that was by Fagini, Fagini, the Italian tennis yeah. player in the US. And to Sissipas do that was a remarkable achievement. I yeah, absolutely. It would have been something like one to 300 or something like that. So it would have just been incredible just to put a 10 pound on it, you know. Yeah. But it, it was just unbelievable. But I had my doubts. I thought, I said to you in previous podcasts, not just in these podcasts, but in the ATP tournament, in the, um, you know, uh, when we we're talking about what was going on in the French Open and the US Open, I said to you, Nadal has an unbelievable record when it comes to the French. He's not got a particularly bad record when it comes to Wimbledon and stuff, but he hasn't won for me um, enough of the other tournaments. And this is when we were doing that podcast about the greatest players that ever mm -hmm. lived. Right. And we certainly said that Nadal, Federer and Novak are the greatest players that have ever lived so far in tennis. But when you look at that kind of mix, you got uh, Rafael uh, Nadal on that incredible, incredible French Open, um, you know, number that he's on 13 or so it's something along those lines. I'm sure it's 13. 14. And yeah. And You've got someone like Federer that just has such a mixed bag and so does Nofak. And we were like arguing, who's going to be the greatest? Who's going to be the greatest? And in the end, we, we came to the conclusion that Federer is still the greatest because Federer has won pretty much everything and quite a few times to make it such a mixed bag. We still argue he's the greatest. So I wasn't convinced I thought Nadal is at his best that I've ever seen him for a long time. And he did tremendously well in the ATP, yeah. but I wasn't convinced he was going to win the um, uh, Australian Open. I was convinced that Nofak was going to fight this one. He was going to prove everyone wrong. He was going to come back and somehow fight those demons, fight those emotional issues that he's had over the last year. And a lot of it could be down to the fact there's no crowds, but I thought Nofak will come through. He'll get to the final. However, I just think that Daniel Medvedev at the moment, with um, the transition he's had, he had a great US Open. He had, all right, a pretty shocking French Open. Mm. But after that, things just got better. And the ATP... Yeah, he made me a lot of money there, Rob. He made yeah. me a lot of money there. Same, same here. And we're talking about the eight best players in the world. Yeah. And he showed his true colours, Daniel. Eight top players. And he won that and he deserved to win that. And he I thought a ter he's... terrific head to head against the top 10. Better than yeah. everybody else is Daniel Medvedev. He is not intimidated, Rob. No. He and he's going... He feels like, in fact, the bigger the, the scene for him, the more he brings out the man, he, he loves it. He loves exactly. it. So he's going into a, 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 an Australian final yeah. against Nofak on a high of the ATP, plus Daniel Medvedev has cruised quite nicely through this uh, tournament. Mm -hmm. So I have my reservations. On one side, I've got my respect for Nofak, a man that is three Grand Slams behind Federer Nadal. 
angry, fighting for this uh, Australian Open just to get it within two of those guys. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure Nofat's going to be in the final of Wimbledon. But somehow, somehow, I think he's had a few ropey moments throughout this whole tournament. And I just think it's going to be a five-setter. And somehow, I don't... Oh, I just think Daniel Medvedev... Who's your money on, Bob? Who's your money on? Who's your money on, mate? No, that's what I'm saying. I think it's going to be a five-setter. I think it's going to be incredibly tight. I think if Nofat plays the tennis that Nofat usually plays, he's going to win. But if he, if, but if Nofat has a ropey start like he did in the French Open, or if he plays against Daniel Medvedev like he did against Nick, uh, Nick uh, Kyrgios... Um, really, I'm going to have to say, I think Daniel Medvedev is going to clinch it. I've just got a feeling it's going to be a bit of a shock horror. And I think it's going to be Daniel Medvedev. I just I, think I, Daniel Medvedev is more solid and he's on fire. And I just think Nofak, he isn't quite where he wants to be, even though he's in the final. I don't think he's the Nofak of like a year or two ago. Well, Novak, this is his... Every one of these greats, they have their back garden. Federer, it's Wimbledon. That's his back garden. Nadal, it's Roland Garros. That's his back garden. And obviously, the Rod Laver call and Australia Open is... is no I get after it. After winning eight. So, my analysis is... It's going to go one of two ways, I think. It's either going to be an absolute classic of a five setter. And, it will be. Uh, and I think Daniel Mev, and I'm going to pick Daniel Medvedev because I just got Same him with him. I just, everything in my waters tell him. I, obviously, when you bet against Novak, you, it carries a massive health warning. But my gut, my mind, he's the form player. The data tells me this 20 matches winning run. He has a fairly good head to head against Novak. He enjoys playing Novak. In fact, he is one of his favorite opponents. He sees it as an ultimate test. Novak still has that little injury as well uh, to play. So he's not at his absolute sharpest and best. Um, that's one thing as well to bear in mind. Although he did look very, very good in the semi final. Or is Novak going to do what Nadal did to Novak in the French to Daniel Medvedev, i.e., straight sets, Novak show, and he roars like an absolute gladiator and he's at his absolute beast mode. Novak right. well, beast mode. A a absolutely. And look, Johnny, I've said it and I'll say it again. I said to you that Novak was going to get to the final. Yes, it's his back garden. Yes, he wants this Australian Open, right? He's got to the final and anything can happen in the final. But I remember no fact twittering um, um, uh, or tweeting, I should say, uh, um, in the French Open. This is going to be a great match. And look what happened there against uh, Nadal. But I appreciate this is a totally different ball game. This is his back garden. But I've got... Do you and... think you get nervous, Daniel? His first Australian oh, Open final? I don't think so. Probably a little bit. But to all of the people listening to this, I already had a bet at three to one on, Daniel. Yeah. on Medvedev winning the final. Yeah. So I have to run with Medvedev because I've got him at three to one. Again, but I what I might do here is have a bet that I think Nofak will get the first set. I think Daniel's going to get the second. I think if Daniel... Um, plays to Nofak's uh, injury and tiredness because personally I think Nofak has had quite long matches more than Daniel's had so head to head Rob 4-3 to Djokovic against Medvedev is super oh, it's so close so the last time they played was the ATP and Medvedev won in straight set 6-3-6-3 six, three, six, three. prior to exactly. that they played in the um, ATP Cup Australia, Novak won, won in three sets. All their other matches, barring one, has been like three sets. So the odds are four to five Novak evens to Daniel. 
That's rubbish odds, really, to be honest. But I have three to one. You have three to one. So this is what I want to happen, uh, guys and girls. <laughs> I want Novak to win the first set. And the reason why I say this is because then the odds will be much better on Daniel. Correct. And I hope that Daniel then roars back and wins the match. I have to bet on this tournament final because I haven't made the money that I wanted to do on this tournament, unlike Robert with his outright betting. Um, so for me, it's Monte Carlo or bust. I'm going to be nervous. I'm going to put all the stuff that I've put on this tournament, on this match. And I'm calling it. I'm going for Daniel. Right. Well, can I just say this, Johnny? I'm absolutely calling Daniel even though I've made plenty of money over the uh, years on NoFAC. When you look at that head to head, let's be honest. NoFAC has had his moments for me in this tournament. Mm. And they're the and same right, kind of way. I want to stand corrected. You were right. It was Taylor Fritz, the five setter that he got through. You were correct. I was talking about the roundish match. I got confused with the yeah. other podcast episode where you said, you know, if Roundish doesn't beat him after 11 times being injured, he'll never beat him. So, but you were right. It was Daniel T Taylor Fritz. Just want to it, it, correct that for the record. It, it, exactly. And, and, and the finish, Johnny, like I said, um, Nofak had not a great US Open, as we know. Mm. He had a great French uh, Open, the best he's probably had in a while. Got to another final, but was a shadow of himself against Nadal um, had his moments in the ATP, but obviously got beaten by Daniel, but Daniel's been consistent. And in this Australian open, even all the other analysts and commentators were saying it's unusual for no fact to be having these four setters and these five setters at this stage in the tournament. Daniel hasn't had that. Apart from one where his coach walked out in him, it was a bit funny. Uh, he was winning and then he played, I think it was third round or something like that, and he won in five sets. He was leading up two sets. He let go the other two sets. And I think there was some kind of odd... Daniel, sometimes when you watch him, he'll be venting, a bit like Murray used to do with his box. <laughs> I think the coach got a bit annoyed. His coach, who he he's absolutely adores, and he lives in Monte Carlo and they train together and, and he, he has really made Daniel the, 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 the absolute player he is. Um, he walked out. Um, but apart from that, it's Daniel's time. I think it's yeah. Daniel's time. I think. Let's have a look. Let's have a look, right? What others are saying. Okay. Mm. Let's have, let's have a look. What, what others think. That. Yeah. Because. I'm pretty sure that there's going to be a bit of a, uh, a mixed reaction. You can't write out NoFAC. You just cannot. But if NoFAC was steaming through his uh, matches like he normally does, I would say it's a, an absolute given. But Daniel was playing tennis the same way he was playing it in the ATP final. I just think that, Daniel Medvedev and everyone listening to this would agree. He deserves to have a grand slam and equal that of Donomit team. Donomit team for me has been pretty disappointing in this tournament. And I don't know what happened in his last match when he didn't even get a game in the third set. What happened there? Six luff. I don't know what happened to team. I can only think having crowds and then not having crowds suddenly... He just really lost it after the Kyrgios match and it was a really great atmosphere. And team is an ultimate machine. You know, I have every admiration for him and he's a great player. And I, if you don't enjoy watching Dominic team, you don't enjoy tennis really, um, to be honest. the way He's, he's, he's fantastic. Ball. But there are moments with team, if you get on top of him, and almost strangle him so he don't, he don't allow him to get back into it, he, he can go away. Um, so yeah, that's a funny one. But the analysts, for, your, for in answer to your question, it's about three-two with analysts picking t uh, Medvedev and uh, uh, Djokovic. Most are going for five sets or four sets, so it's five. very split. Is I think five. Let's have a five, everybody. Let's yeah. have all the crowds back. 
let's it's a Sunday morning over breakfast. I'll be nervous. I'll have all my monies on it, but let's have a classic and let's have a classic with me winning on the bet. Yeah. Well, just before we end this show, I definitely, definitely think that if Wimbledon goes ahead this year, team is going to be on fire on grass. I think Daniel Medvedev is going to do very, very well because of being a big surf, tall guy. You then got no fact and the Dow in the mix, and it'd be great to see Roger in there as well. I think the tennis is going to be dominated by that group in Wimbledon. I wouldn't like to call it, but I could see Dominic Team or Daniel Medvedev or even Tissy Pass, because Tissy Pass would have great play on grass. I can see all of those players. Uh, I, I'll see Tissy Pass semi final, but I personally. I see Wimbledon final between Fedra or, or Novak. And I'm not saying the obvious, but that's kind of how things are going at the moment. But I'm starting to see a bit more from Daniel and Donomic. And I think it's going to be a bit like the women's tennis, Johnny. It's not just going to always be Novak and Adele. Well, Team and Daniel Medvedev are going to get some grand slams. And Yannick yeah. Sinner as well. Um, you know... There's so many great great players uh, coming through at the moment. Yeah, I mean, Mystic Rob, you know, that's very good in your magic ball and you might make your uh, predictions accurate and I'm sure we'll thrash out with some lively debate and bets. But I agree with you, things are going to have a little bit of a change uh, in terms of winners. Obviously, we're still going to have uh, the, 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 you know, the big three at times, um, well, the big two at the moment. Um, with Feather and Nadal, uh, sorry, Nadal and Djokovic. But just to end this podcast, according to the Metro, they've done a poll, 75% are going for Novak to win and only 25% Medvedev. So brilliant. we'll see how that goes tomorrow and you'll find out whether we won or we haven't. Good night. Good night.